How's it going, Manifold Gospel Center? Just wanted to spend a little time with you, uh, continue uh, looking at the, the Bible study that uh, the Lord led me to concerning character in the midst of chaos. We're looking at the life of Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus. So uh, let's, let's just open with a word of prayer, and then let's uh, do a quick review, and then I want to share some more nuggets of, uh, of Joseph, this godly man, uh, with you. And uh, let's glean some something, some other things from his character that we can um, uh, ask God to continue to refine us and uh, place into our character as well. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you for this moment of time with the men. Lord, bless them. Those that are working, uh, the the essential workers, Lord, uh, protect them, keep them safe, cover them, Lord, with your with your feathers, uh, keep them keep them safe, and uh, give them wisdom on uh, their daily going ins and going out, Lord. We ask you to continue with divine protection upon them, even as your word says that no plague shall come near thy dwelling. That's a promise from God, and Lord, we, we hold on to that. And so, Lord, as we gather around your word, as we look at the life of Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, uh, the mantle that you placed upon him, the, uh, what, the, the mission that you gave him, Lord, we, we want to take a look at that and um, apply the truth of God to our lives uh, and let it refine us. Let us make it, us men of character in the midst of chaos. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I uh, just want to go over a quick review with you from what we had gone over last week. Uh, remember, the Bible said that, uh, as we see, that Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and it says that before uh, they came together, she was found to be uh, with child through the Holy Spirit. Now, can you imagine the conversation that had gone on with Mary and Joseph. Understand that this was a this was a deep relationship. Betrothal was um you know was, was binding, so um there there was there was a, a, a deep commitment and and understand the 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 heartache between both of them that you know what 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 Mary was carrying and the news that she had to bring to Joseph and then Joseph hearing the news that Mary was pregnant and and this 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 sense of betrayal and and confusion and all that's going on. Um, we see the Bible then tells us that Joseph was a righteous man. And we see how it's defined here in Joseph's life. He goes and he begins to look at, at Scripture, and he begins to try to find wisdom in the Word of God. We see that uh, he probably more than likely looked at Deuteronomy 22, verses 22 through 27, where it begins to talk about um, uh, what, what the punishment is for what, um, what had happened to Mary. And so he sees the punishment, and yet he looks at the law of the Torah, but then he also looks at the law of love and, and how he felt for Mary. And, um, and, he didn't, it's, and the Bible says he did not want to expose her. And so it's a public shame. So what it, it said he did, he, he decided to put her away quietly. And then the Bible tells us that when he had considered this, that the angel of the Lord uh, spoke to him in a dream and, and, and basically gave him some instructions. So we're going to go into this uh, in, in better detail. Now, uh, we're going to look more closely at Joseph. Um, Joseph, again, being a righteous man, but he's a godly man. He's a man's man. You know, manhood is not found in our outward appearance. It's not found in... Uh, you know, whether we wear a plaid shirt or if we wear a camo or if we wear a suit and a tie, you know, uh, that's not where man, manhood is found. It's not found in those things like that. It's not found in uh, if you have no tattoos or if you have tattoos or sleeve tattoos, tattoos up your neck, uh, tattoos on your hands. Uh, manhood is not found in outward appearance. Beard, no beard, hair, no hair. Manhood is not found in an outward appearance. It's not found in our daily occupation. You know, you can be good with constructing things and putting things together with your hands or being able to fix a car uh, or, you know, you may be able to be good with numbers, good with music, you know, funny, uh, you know, whatever your talent is, whatever your occupation may be. Your identity as a man is not found in those things. It is not found in what we do. It is found in who we are. It says that we are made in the image of God. He made us a human being. And in that being, 
we find that our identity is found when we reflect the very character and nature of God as we see that Joseph has done. So we, uh, we have to understand that the, the action that reflects the attributes of God, it's in, it's in our actions. When we act in, in, a, in a right manner, in a righteous manner, and it reflects the attributes of God, that's when our manhood is most on display because it glorifies God. See, Joseph was a man's man. Think about this. Joseph, being, being the earthly father of Jesus, remember it says, it, it called Jesus the carpenter, and that's what Joseph was. Imagine, there's a close relationship here because Joseph teaches Jesus his trade. And Joseph carries, and I'm sorry, Jesus carries on the trade that Joseph had taught him because it said he was the carpenter from Nazareth. So we see that Joseph was, was a good man. He was a godly man. He was a man's man. He was a solid man. And now um, we see that because we see that when Joseph was, was struggling with what do I do with what do I do now? How do, how do I handle this situation? The personal chaos that had come upon Joseph now um, is, is, is you know, Joseph is, is, is thinking these things through. What do I do? What's the right response? I know what the Torah says. I know how I feel. I know that I love her. I know that I don't want to expose her to public shame. And the, the Bible tells us that, you know, the plans of a man are in, its are in, in his heart. But the Bible tells us that the Lord directs the steps. So, you know, when I, when I was reading Luke and, and the angel had visited Mary, I, I, I kind of wondered is, why didn't the angel take a left down Joseph Junction and go speak to Joseph and, 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 and kind of, um, you know, settle the matter, put them both on the same, on the same platform? You know, so there, this surprise, there wasn't a, 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 a moment of surprise to Joseph. I'm going to let you know why. Because men are wrestlers. Think about Jake, Jacob back in the Old Testament. He wrestled with the angel. God at times wants us, even as uh, Pastor Rick was speaking to us on Sunday, when it talks about that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God, so God allowed Joseph to wrestle with the situation. And then when, when he had made the decision and, it's, and went to bed, it says, then the angel of the Lord spoke to him in a dream. So God, some, God allows us to, sometimes to wrestle with things. And it, it's in that wrestling that, our, that, the character, that the character of God, it comes to the forefront. Am I going to do the, the righteous thing or am I going to do the self-righteous thing? Am I going to exact revenge or am I going to practice what the word says? The vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'll repay. You, you keep your character. Character is valuable, especially in times of chaos. See, God was allowing the character of Joseph to come through in the midst of chaos because Joseph knew that God had spoken. And when he, and it, said, it said in the scripture, it says that when he went to sleep, the angel of the Lord came to him and spoke to him and says, Joseph, he begins to, to, to speak to him and say, oh, the th what's going on with Mary is, is from the Holy Spirit. So we're going we're gonna to get a little bit more into that. I'm just kind of paraphrasing it. But, it. but when Joseph knew that God had spoken and Joseph knew the plan of God, he, became, he went into action. And that's the other thing, that when we wrestle with things and then we hear from God, God we, we're men of action. And so we begin to uh, move in that. So let's, uh, let's uh, take a quick Read through again on of Matthew chapter 1, and then um, let's go into some other things to glean from the character of Joseph. It says here, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But... When he had considered this, behold, I love these words, just, it, you know, scripture down to the very words, uh, 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 they're so valuable. He said, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, 
Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but kept her as a virgin until she gave birth to his son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. So um, I want to go into a little bit more of the character of Joseph here. You see, Joseph's righteous character is, is, is revealed. We're seeing, we're seeing this thing being, being put into action. See, he honored God by his obedience. He goes to sleep. The angel explains what's going on, and he says, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And it tells us in Scripture that he, he immediately woke from, from this dream, and he took Mary's wife. So he got the plan of God. He knew this was God. He understood now that what, what he was wrestling with, what his decision was, um, was not the plan of God, that the plan of God overtook his own decision. So he put aside his plan, and he immediately put into action the plan of God, which was take Mary home as your wife. He obeyed the word of the Lord. And here's the other thing, too, uh, that he did. He honored Mary by covering her. See, when, when the angel said, uh, what's, it, what's, what's, what's being birthed in her is from the Holy Spirit, um, she'll, she'll bear a son, and you're to name the child Jesus, Here's, and because it's going to save his people from their sins. Now, understand, Joseph knows his lineage. He knows that he's a descendant of David. He knows that the Messiah is going to come through the line of David. He has somewhat of an understanding that, and he knows scripture where it said in Isaiah that behold, the virgin, as it said here, will be with child and, and will, will bring forth a, a son and will call him Emmanuel. He's now, he's understanding, wow, scripture is being fulfilled. Mary is, is, is carrying prophecy. Mary is carrying the Messiah. And so he covers her. He honors her. He honors what God is doing in the life of his wife. And so we see out of this wrestling, out of this, this turmoil, what comes to the forefront was his character. And so he acted in a righteous manner, not in a self-righteous manner. And now he takes Mary as his wife, and now he covers her. He honors what God is doing in her life. And it says that he doesn't, he has no relations with her. He abstains from having relationships, having relationship with her. Because he knows that something greater than himself is going on in, in, in what's going on in Mary's life and in his life. The mantle now that's been placed upon him. This is, the, you know, uh, it, it went from, from turmoil now to, to there's, some, there's, a, there's a burden on him now. Uh, he's going to be the earthly father of the Messiah. And he realizes this and he honors what God is doing in his home. He, on, he, he, he honors God, he, he honored what God was doing in Mary's life, and he protects it, he covers it, he serves what's going on, he serves God, he serves his wife, um, and so he, we see that he's not, he's not only a righteous man, but he's a man of honor. And, and here's the, the beautiful thing, it says that here in the, in the, in the scripture, in, uh, when Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did what the angel of the Lord uh, had commanded him. He takes Mary as his wife, but he kept her virgin until she gave birth to his son and he called his name Jesus. So he follows the very plan to the T. He doesn't say, well, you know, um, I, I know what God wants, but, you know, um, Mary's my wife now and this is my home. And so uh, I'm going to take a little bit of authority here and I'm going to name him Joseph. I'm going to name him Sam. No, he follows through with the plan of God to the very detail. She'll, be, she'll birth a son. You're to name him Jesus, for he's going to save his people from their sins. 
It didn't say that he was going to set up a kingdom. It didn't say that he was going to be uh, uh, great in, in, in any realm. And understand what it says. He's going to save his people from the sin. Jo Joseph and Mary, they may have had no idea what that even meant. How is he going to save his people from their sins? What, what, is that, what does it entail? It didn't matter to Joseph. What mattered to Joseph was that he, he was received the command from the Lord and he followed it through to its very completion. When the child was born, he had the honor. And God gave him the honor of naming the child Jesus. And see, when we honor God, God honors us by allowing us to name the things in life that God is doing in our own life or even in the life of our children or in the life of our wife, as we cover them, we get to lead them. And we get to see the plans of God prosper sometimes, you know, in our children, sometimes in our wife, and sometimes in our own life. But as we walk and we reflect on the character of Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, and we, we glean these things and we understand that character counts, and it counts in the midst of chaos. And it counts even when we're, when we're out and about in the world. People want to see character. People, you know, men, men value honor. I remember the, one, of, one of my favorite movies. Uh, there, was a, there was a scene, A Few Good Men. And there was a scene at the end. And um, there were two Marines that were on trial. And they were found guilty of, of, um, not, of not being honorable as a Marine. I don't remember... I'm kind of paraphrasing it. Um, and what happens is there was this Marine, his name was Harold, and he was a, you know, just a strapping young man. And uh, you, if you look at him, he had all the makings of a Marine. Chiseled face and all of this, that. And um, the other Marine asked, why, why, are we, why were we found guilty? We've done nothing wrong. We've done nothing wrong. And he said, yes, we did. For we were supposed to look out for those that were weaker than us. And the lawyer, played by Tom Cruise, says to, the, to, that, to that man, he says, Harold, he says, uh, you don't need to have stripes on your arm to have honor. And uh, anytime I, I watch that movie, and I've watched it over and over again, I, I, you know, maybe I'll even watch it during this time of isolation, only because uh, it, 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 it ministers to me as a man. I says, well, Harold, you don't need to have stripes on your arm to have honor. It's the same thing. You, you, uh, uh, honor is not found in our appearance. It's found in what goes on in the inside character. So when there's things going that don't go our way, do we still honor God, honor our family, and honor even our own, our own selves and walk, uh, walk in honor and in dignity and in peace and in, in, in the righteousness that, that, um, that uh, God has birthed in us? God bless you. Uh, glean from this, uh, from the life of Joseph, read it. We got there some more nuggets there we'll go over in the coming weeks. God bless you. Stand strong in the Lord. Cover your family and um, lead your family and do uh, what God places in your heart for the time that we're in now, for not only for yourself, but for your wife and for your children, if you're single, for yourself. Um, but be blessed and uh, prosper in the Lord. Amen.